you are listening or if you're at YouTube watching the Church Answers podcast, thank you for being here. We love our audience. We, we are honored that you spend time with us. These are short, sometimes pithy, sometimes just not worth anything. But most of the time, we try to give you value. And that, that precedes you becoming a part of this podcast, Jess. I, I, was, just, I was talking to Alana, our producer, uh, uh, with you before we get on. I used to do these all by myself and we'd record nine at a time. And even though they're short, by the time we got done with nine, I was just thinking, I don't even know what I said in the last podcast. So you, your coming on has made a big difference in the way we do this. I bet I bet our downloads are going to be significantly higher now that, now that or, you're a part of this podcast. Or significantly less. We'll find out. So I'm, oh. I'm, I'm glad to be able to jump in and, and to help out. And, and hopefully they are worthwhile. <laughs> I wonder about some of those that I've done in the past. Uh, thank you, Cheney and Associates. I mean, here's what Cheney and Associates do. They let you focus on the your ministry. They focus on the finances. They take care of you. They, they take care of your bookkeeping. They take care of, of, of giving you cloud-based software. They do all of these financial back-end stuff for churches, and they're the leader in it. And so if you want the best, go to Cheney and Associates. They're based in California, but they have clients in all 50 states, all over the place. And they are the best. And through their cloud-based software, they can work with anybody, anytime, at any place, from church plants, small church, to larger churches, to mega churches. They've got you covered. Thank you, Steve Cheney. You're a good friend. Thank you, Cheney and Associates. You're a great organization. All right, we got a three-part podcast, Why We Must Rethink the Smaller Church. And we're going to start off with the, the new norm. And by the new norm, we're going to just give a little bit of the landscape of what is taking place in the American churches today. It was only, it was only 10 years ago that we were talking about the median size of the church. Well, maybe about 15 now. Median size of the church being 120. And so half of the churches, median means half were on one side, half were on the other. So half of the churches were smaller than 120. And you'd look at a church of 80 and you'd say, that's a small church. Boy, have times changed. Now, the median size, depending upon which study you're looking, we've been saying 50, 65 for a while, and the new data came out that indicates probably 55 to 50. I think it's even smaller because there are a lot of churches that uh, don't report at all, that they don't have a website, they don't have right. a telephone, they, right. don't, they, don't, they, they don't communicate. So I think, I think really it is a lot smaller. But let's go with the data, and let's just simply say the median size of a church is probably around 50 today. Mm. So that you get to a church of 150 to 200 in the landscape of America, that is a large church. And there's so many things that we, we need to begin to look at. And that's why we're going to take three different episodes uh, to look at this because there are different types of smaller churches. Let's, let's look at the church at Spring Hill for a second. It's not a smaller church, but when, when the church first started and I was trying to think of some of the early accounts and worship, you know, 45, 50, you know, when we, when we just started having our own place to meet and we got out of your house, I wasn't in your house, but once, once the church moved to your, uh, beyond your house and, uh, it, it was 45, 50, but even then right. the church of Spring Hill was a different type of small church than say where your mother went to church, which was in Laughlin Baptist church near Corinth, Alabama, unincorporated. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, 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 you know, probably 30 to 40 in there. You you look at the church at Spring Hill then and Laughlin either then or now, and those are two different types of churches that are smaller churches. You got some mm -hmm. that are going upward and some that are going downward, and you've got a different culture in, in both of them. So they're, to say it's smaller is not what it used to be, I guess is what I'm saying, Jess. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think I've... I, I've been to some churches. Maybe I've been to that one at some point. I don't remember. I, I, I remember visiting as a young kid some of those those rural churches um, out there. But yeah, so even when the when the church of Springfield started, we when we began weekly services, I, I think we were in the the fifty to seventy five range. You know, for mm -hmm. for a, our beginning season, and it did. It had a different feel. I mean, you could you could start pinpointing a, you know several different things in there from you know style of worship to um, just even intentionality with kids ministry. You know, there's some things we focused on, even as a smaller church that was maybe different than previous generations or even other churches that have been around, you know, for, for a long time. And so smaller 
in order to reach our community has to be a little bit different. It's there is there's a new norm. It is a smaller church, but the question becomes, what does that mean? What does that yep. look like for for our churches in our communities? And by the way, you're, uh, we're talking about whether or not you had been to Laughlin Baptist Church. Just to let you know, that's where your mother and I got married at Laughlin Baptist Church on December 17, 1977. It was raining and they had no parking lot. So it was all mud and grass. And uh, that's that was that was when we got married. And then something else, by the way. Happy anniversary to the United States today. We're releasing this on July 4th. 2024, releasing this. There's another significance to July 4th for both you and me, Jess. It was on July 4th in 1943 that your grandfather and grandmother got married. There you go. So we're talking about two weddings and we're talking about July 4th. Gosh, there's a lot of reasons that we might not be here today if some things had not taken place. So that leads to the question, have I been to that church? <laughs> have I been to Laughlin? The answer is probably yes. In the times you went to your grandparents' house, and they probably gotcha. took you took you down the road, as they would say, they probably took you down the road to right. to that church. But that was what I used to think of when I think of a smaller church. Right. Now things are changing. Half mm -hmm. of the churches in the U.S., at least half, are fifty or fewer in average worship attendance. So what that means is we got to start rethinking it. It's, it's, it's not like the Laughlin Baptist Church. We, we don't want to forget the Laughlin Baptist Churches, the small rural churches that maybe have been always been small or some have declined to that size. But we have we, we've got to start thinking about, OK, there are going to be some smaller churches that uh, three years ago were 200, 250. Now, there's there's another thing that's taking place with smaller churches, and it's COVID. And Many churches lost 20 to 40 percent of their attendance on the other side of COVID. As a matter of fact, the latest information I have is still that churches are down about 20 percent, okay. even though some churches have recovered from, from COVID. So now we got the smaller churches that became that 50 and under after they went through that, whatever their period was in their state where they weren't there for gathered worship. I don't remember how long we didn't gather for worship, Jess. I don't, you probably 13 weeks. Right? That was it. That was it. 13 weeks. It seemed like a longer period. I guess it felt because like COVID. it felt like a long time. It did. It did. Yeah. And that's, that's, we actually launched in our brand new building or well, new to us building at the end of that. It was, it was, a, it was a crazy season, crazy season for a, then a four-year-old church. Well, and it, I, I remember the first streaming service. It was you and Tyler sitting at a desk. We hadn't, we still hadn't figured that out. Yeah. And, you know, we we had never ju jumped in the live stream, but again, I mean, so those are things talking about, again, we, we weren't 50 at the time, you know, I, we felt like maybe we were a smaller church, but we were beginning to do things. COVID forced us into this new norm of a smaller to mid-sized church. Uh, four years ago, uh, you know, obviously we we're smaller then than what we are now, but it, it's, it's, it's this reality of there are opportunities, there are structures, there are things that a smaller church can begin to do that's with technology, with, with opportunities. There, there's, it's rethinking this. Smaller, smaller has a lot of potential. Smaller has a lot of opportunity. And, and no matter what, if you're a church plant that's growing or a maybe established church that seems to decline, we, I think there's a huge opportunity. There's an excitement. Like I, it's, it's kind of almost rethinking. It's, it's, it's something I talk about with my staff is, is whenever they take on a new responsibility, I was like, I need you to promote yourself right now. I need you to mentally promote yourself into this role. I need you to start beginning to think that you can do these things. I think there are some smaller churches out there. They need to have that mindset that this, this is normal in a lot of ways, but not being content with that, not, not becoming more insulated, not becoming more complacent, but going, okay, we can do this. There, there is a normalization that's a good thing because now we can look at how do we restructure? How do we find these opportunities? To me, that's what gets gets me fired up when I especially want to talk with, with other pastors that, that are smaller churches like, hey, you need to rethink this. You need to promote yourself. You need to have a different mindset about what God's called you to do. These 50 people are just maybe waiting for you to, to go. And so that's to me, when I when I hear this data, when I hear about these things, and I think about the local church pastor, and I think about the, the church leaders and that, promote yourself. Think like a bigger church. Begin to think in a way that you can, you can, God can use you. They get 50 people that 
who knows what God can do if you begin to pray and seek his will and seek his presence. That to me is what excites me when I think about this, this new norm of this size church. And that is a good segue. We've already recorded and have downloaded. And so you can download it or upload it. So you can download it. You can watch or listen to parts two and three of we must rethink the smaller church because it's already ready. When you go into part two of this, we're going to talk about the structure and how it's changing and maybe how it needs to change. A lot more information to come on these pithy bite-sized podcasts that we are doing for you on a regular basis and brought to you by Cheney and Associates, the accounting firm for the church. You focus on your ministry. Cheney will focus on your finances. Thanks as always. I hope you get a chance to go on over to episode three or part three, I should say, of why we must rethink the smaller church. Part two is next and then part three. So we'll see you in the next episode.